Hi, it's Mark. Today's video is going to be about hot tubs, don't worry. But before we get started with that, I wanted to quickly talk about Elex. And you might have heard on some of my other social media and on YouTube before that we were intending on meeting up in Coventry to have a bit of a get together and catch up. Um, certainly lots of people who've been helping out with Apprentice one to one over the last year or year and a half. That's now not happening. Um, I've already explained my reasoning for that on the other posts, but essentially um, the organisers of Alex don't want young unemployed apprentices or young students at college attending. Um, I've asked a few times and the answer comes back in various different ways where they try not to say that that's the, what they are actually um, doing by saying our oh, apprentices can attend with their employers making on that you know you're not actually an apprentice if you don't have an employer which is just of no regard to the current circumstances or situation where there's loads of people within the apprentice one to one community i help with who are desperately trying to find employers before they're booted off their courses and um, a whole load of people who are in education because they can't find employed apprenticeship places so they're on full-time college courses youngsters who would relish an opportunity to come look around a trade show maybe find another avenue that they're interested in or potentially meet up with an employer who can give them a job you know that would have been something nice that i think the organizers of alex could have considered in the circumstances and um yeah for that reason i won't be attending they have come back and said they've had issues with that demographic before and I've explained about this on social media where there was um, an incident of I think it was sexual assault or something like that but as I've said before we can find examples of that of every single age group every single ethnic background whatever you like all humans are capable of some awful things and that just comes back to security at the event really and ensuring that people who are misbehaving are removed um, rather than a whole demographic age group or from a certain background excluded uh, you know it's discrimination that's what it is I'm afraid and they might not like that being said but that is exactly what it is um, certainly with the community of people I'm involved with that's put me off attending at the end of the day I'm an employer I employ electricians I buy electrical equipment the exhibitors at that show would be um, selling wares I'd be interested in buying I ain't going now um, and apparently this kind of feedback has been given to them from the exhibitors saying that they don't want those people there and exhibitors I've spoken to and I won't name them but they range from CPSs to manufacturers and others have said that that's just not the case so yeah make of that what you will on with the video now where we're going to look at a hot tub installation I am going to give some of my thoughts on it and some of the requirements around the earthing system and supply circuit for it get involved in the comments let me know what you think if you go into Alex have a fantastic time I do realize it's been difficult for a lot of the exhibitors over the last year or two and to be able to put a show on and welcome visitors to their stands is massive for them and I'm not knocking them at all it just seems like a lack of class by the organizers to exclude this particular group of people especially when the installer show a couple of weeks later has got a special day for students and they're welcome to attend every single day of that show so yeah kudos to the installer show and i will be there at that one let's carry on with the video here we are this is where the hot tub's going to be housed and i'll show you inside the garage for how it's all going to be wired in and connected but you'll see straight away where we're actually off the massive earth so we're on a raised patio area you'll notice here there's a light fitting this is actually going to be changed it's not staying it's that light fitting but there is going to be a light there and also we've got a bit of bonding down there to the oil um, pipe coming into the garage so there's a few earthy bits in and around the whole the old hot tub and there's the i mean you've got a socket over there as well and if we're talking about applying section 702 these are all within the zones around a swimming pool um, so we've got the issue of ensuring that they are all at the same potential and um, I'll explain the reason why we are going for the earthing arrangement we are in a little while but I just wanted to show you where it's actually going to get installed nice lovely garden here and um, the main part of the electrical stuff is in the garage I'm going to go and see the guys because they're busy just turn the radio down in there Nathan 
so we've got the old meter cabinet here so this is the supply coming in you'll see it is tncs uh, ev chargers have been in and done their their, their stuff so i'm not going to make any comment on that but you know this is what we've got typical in the meter cabinet and um, service fuse has been cut and got this here inside the garage you can see we've got um double stack board which is nice this has recently been rewired this building so we're just pulling in a the steel wire arm and now Matthew's up here popping that in so we're taking our route along the top of these timbers at the top and then we're going to drop down and the, the hot tub is basically going to be installed the other side of here um, and you'll see we've got the earthing system all coming into this consumer unit up here and we'll jump onto the video to show that uh, yeah this needs needs a bit of attention again not our handiwork but that needs a bit of sorting out and uh, yeah we're going to press on with that now let the guys get cracking once we've got to a stage for wiring a few bits and pieces up a bit noisy of them um i'll show you that so yeah i'll jump back in a sec <laughs> landed into the rear and we have dropped out onto this drum I'm gonna get the isolator on now and we'll leave it all locked off ready for the hot tub installers to work safely and connect up and then we can come back and have a look at it um, once they are done but yeah I'll, I'll show you the rest of the install in a bit we've still got to connect it up inside but I thought I'd quickly show you the isolator and it's a it's a gee whiz one these are actually new um, pretty decent quality and again we've gone for a, a bigger one than we could have got away with and that's just for a bit of room for wiring really some of the smaller ones are a bit tight um, a bit more generous here yeah we'll jump on with the video okay so we've gone for an RCBO in there it's type A and you can see we've dropped it in before the RCD protected circuits drop the steel wire armor in and glanded in the side so we've got one of the um, piranha nuts on the SWA gland and we have put the grip screw in and an air fly lead as well also with a teeth bitten into the case so that's extra well earthed and we just need to tidy up this little bit here we'll get on with that in a sec all wired in you can see we've locked off so this is the safe for september campaign if you've not seen it um must lock off your circuits stay safe and keep yourself away from live parts at all possible costs we're just going to tidy this up now and then i'll jump through the install with you and show you exactly what we've done um, but yeah tidy inside the seat okay so we've got the isolator on and locked off ready for the hot tub installers and we'll return to have a look at how that pans out and see exactly what the manufacturer's instructions are on the hot tub in particular as i said we've got the oil bond there we've got a light up there and we've got a tncs supply socket over there it's all in zone two and we'll have a little chat through the rest of this video about if you can connect the earth straight into this hot tub or if you should be installing an earth electrode and the various reasons for that you've got step voltage we've got the loss of the pen conductor that could be an issue and i'm going to give my opinions on it very shortly and explain exactly what we've done on this install okay so we're just getting some test results here we've got a uh, on the mega tester three low for the old zs see we're going between line neutral and the cpc 
it's just figuring out what it wants and there you can see we've measured 0 0.4 ohms and that's utilising the supplier's earth. Okay, so we've got a steel wire armour in and that's got the um, fire support on the wall so they're the linear clips there and we've popped some um, steel ties with clips along the top and again we've got some of the linear see in there they blend in pretty well just some extra fire support on the cable and that's nice and secure now all wired into the board I'll show you there we've temporarily labeled it i'm going to have to tidy up some of these labels because they got a bit messy in moving them around you can see there we've got the hot tub on so that's on a b40 and uh yeah we're all in the board there it's on its own little type ar cd there is a few little gremlins shall we say in this existing setup but um, that's not our work this has been one of it we are going to sort that out but yeah we'll get on with it now we're just testing it off and uh, another one complete catch up you in a bit so you may notice here these street lights and they kind of ring the property so they go all the way around and there has been a 10 mil steel wire armor taken out to those and they are um, connected with an earth rod into earth as well and then back to the, the consumer unit in the garage here so we do actually have some supplementary earth on this install so if you see here as well there is also this workshop building and this is on earth foundation as well so there's electrodes on this building and that goes back in a 16 mil steel wire armor cable to the main consumer unit so while we um haven't put an earth rod in especially for the hot tub there are numerous points of earthing within this installation and um, we've got the suppliers earth we also have the earth running around the street lights we've got the earth at the outbuilding and the measurement of ze on the actual earth electrodes if you like so that's the measurement at the look at these sheep here at the workshop and also um, on the street lights is actually 11 ohms so it's really low we've got under that 20 ohm value that i will mention later on in this video um, so it, it's pretty decent and it, it removes a need for us to have to put earth electrodes in especially for the hot tub now i'm going to talk a little bit more about that again because it's not the end of the story right, so i think we've got quite a bit to unpack there having looked on site and i want to give my opinion on hot tubs and you know it's just my opinion from my own experience and my own training and i talk about this um, with a few people on social media so in particular there is neil bridgman and um, peter monsford so monty over on on twitter i would love getting involved in those discussions people expressing their point of view and then having a reasoned debate about it is a great way for others to learn and, and twitter is a fantastic platform for that actually you know i stayed off twitter for years and years because it just seemed like i could never understand the timeline to be honest there's so many voices piling in on discussions everywhere i used to get lost but it, it's brilliant now um and i don't know if that's just me getting used to it or having a, a circle of people who i converse with that, that's made it work better for me I don't know but it is nice to go over there and, and chat about these things and that's been one of the things we've been talking about um, Peter's had an article in Professional Electrician where he shared his uh, opinions and thoughts on hot tubs and the research he's put into that is admirable as well there are other articles that the IT, IET have put out there NAPIT, the NIC there's all these pools of thought and people making their points of view known uh, and they, they differ, they differ massively. So that shows that there is a debate to be had in fairness. Uh, and there are a few key aspects to it, certainly with TNCS PME, and that is to do with um, step voltages, if you like, so difference, potential difference of true earth around the hot tub and what the actual voltage on the earth could be on that PME. Now, when you look at the, the supply voltage requirements on the DNOs, they have to maintain a set um, supply I think it's between 253 volts and 216, something like that-ish. And that will give you a maximum volt drop of around 36 volts. So if you half that onto the neutral conductor, it's around 18 volts. So that should be the upper end of what you can actually see in a working system. So this is a system that's well balanced, installed correctly, no faults external to the installation. That is the maximum of what you should see. Um, and the, the reason that people you know, raise that as a concern is that you could step out of the hot tub where there is the conductive water going back to the earth heating element and somebody could notice that as a, as a tingle um, or a sensation. And there are possibilities under certain circumstances where that could extend to being a danger. So that's one of the things that people don't like with PME, one of the concerns. The other is when there is a fault external to uh, 
that, that supply. So the supply coming into the property, you have what's called a pen fault. So you can lose your earth neutral connection. And at that point, there is a there is a, a high likelihood that the earth metal work within a property can rise to 230 volts and higher in certain circumstances. So that's when that becomes dangerous. And with a, a hot tub, the concern there is that obviously our CDs aren't gonna offer any real protection against that. And it's if that is a, a danger for us to consider as installers. Now it all kind of, for me, boils down to what the actual requirements on us are as installers. And we have a couple of a key aspects of that. Um, one is obviously safety. So we want to be installing electrical systems that are safe for people to use. And the other is that the advice and guidance we're giving um, isn't based on some utopian world of electrical installations where um, the work we do ensures complete and utter safety because you know it's not realistic that we can even do that anyway. It's not attainable in, in most scenarios. So the best we can do is finding that compromise between safety and advising our clients of electrical work that's necessary to achieve that. So if we're putting the onus on clients where they've got to have electrical installations that go above and beyond what's needed and we're kind of advising them that this is what you have to do and they're then paying for it, you know, we're putting a financial consequence of any work onto them. So that's the... You know, I guess it's boiling down to us if that's ethical for us as installers to be dictating to people, well, you're going to have to excavate your garden and lay an earth mat. We're going to have to um, put some earth nests in all around your property so we can comply with section 702. Just had a call drop in there, so I had to end that little video. But I think we were talking about section 702 and, you know, complying with that because that's the intent of what the regulations mean. Um, and, and my opinion of that is, we have product standards that relate to hot tubs and whirlpool spas and if you actually look in the regulations and in the guidance to it it says where there is a product standard that the regulations don't apply to those particular pools now that applies to swimming pools so that's in section 702 so straight away you know that's we're kind of saying this applies and then saying it doesn't if you look at some of the articles that have been written so the one by the the IET and I, I forget the gentleman's name who actually authored that and they're kind of suggesting that section 702 supplies, but also referencing that product standard. So, you know, it's one of those things where we're either going to follow the guidance that's issued to us or we're not. You know, it really is as simple as that. And, you know, the, the manufacturers have to produce these hot tubs um, and meet that product standard and then accept that they're going to be connected into electrical systems in people's homes and issue instructions for us as installers to follow. And sometimes I think we can overcomplicate and extend our um, remit, if you like, as to what we need to be responsible for. And people often throw this throwaway comment, well, in a court of law, you're going to need to prove that you've complied with this and the other and how it's difficult to ever accept that connecting into a PME supply is going to be allowable. And, you know, there's all these kind of scare tactics and that, that ultimately, to me, diverts away from the actual discussion at hand is can we connect a hot tub onto a PME earthing system? And for me, the answer is yes, you can. Then you absolutely can. There are certain factors and considerations that you need to bring into bring into play and use your engineering judgment. And I will mention back to my specific install on this one as well, because it is a little bit different. But I don't want to seem like I'm getting out of, you know, actually stating my opinion on this because, you know, we have had other factors at play on this install. Because you can connect onto a PME earthing system. And there are occasions where if you were to put an earth electrode on a hot tub, and again, it is an earth electrode for the hot tub, you aren't TTing anything, um, where you can actually introduce the potential for danger for users. And referencing that back onto the install I was looking at specifically, um, you know, you had that oil bond in close proximity to the hot tub. You know, there's no way that that can be connected into the earth electrode. Um, local to the hot tub itself uh, you could if you wanted put some supplementary bonding on for the lights and the socket and such back to the earth electrode but you are still going to have two volt uh, two earthing systems in close proximity to each other uh, and the issues you have with that as well and there's also the issue of driving earth electrodes into the ground and actually importing voltages onto the tub itself through those pme earthing supplies that are running in the ground all around uh, certainly within city areas you know it's not 
just a case of oh well to to meet the compliance of section 702 you smack an earth electrode in the ground and jobs are good and it isn't we're either going to win apply that in full because we believe that that is what we need to be doing and if that is the case then you need an earth mat under the hot tub um, in my opinion and then that should be connected back to the PME earthing as well and you need a value of under 20 ohms um, you know if you want to divorce entirely and have an earth electrode for the hot tub you know it's questionable if that is actually going to meet all of the requirements in section 702 I'm not saying it's impossible, but it isn't also definitively definite. <laughs> I guess it's the way I'm going to put it. Um, but yeah, referencing back to my install, because we're starting to, to waffle on about the general consensus of hot tubs. And I do want to give my opinion on it. I wanted to kind of share that and put it out there. This is what my YouTube channel is all about. It's just kind of raising discussion and having people dropping with their thoughts and opinions and showing some real world scenarios. The one we've got there is about as bad as you're going to get. You've got TNCS earth, you've got a light that's over the top of the hot tub, you've got a socket that's close by, we've got an oil bond right next to it, um, you know, there's all sorts of factors at play there. Uh, but specifically on ours, as I mentioned, there are some um, street lights, we're calling them, but they're basically Victorian lights that are popped up around the garden. And they all have earth electrodes in them, and the original installers there have run um, a nice 10 mil steel wire armor cable down and connected the earth electrodes in um, and joined them in parallel with the PME. And there's also a couple of external buildings and again they're on um, earth foundations, one of them, and another one has got an earth rod. And again they're connected in parallel back onto the, to the PME. And I think that the reason they've done that is because um, they were mindful with the um, lighting out on the wider install where if they're just going to drive earth electrodes in and leave them stood on their own uh, they didn't want to do that so they've kind of made this system for that particular property and that's kind of solved the issue for us because we have got a good um, reliable earth system from the distributor that I'm confident in even though it's PME it's there it's for us to use and we've also got this backup earthing system that kind of surrounds the whole property and the hot tub itself uh, and offers a value, as I said, when I showed you driving out, I think that we're measuring 11 ohms on. So for us, that's quite a safe install. We're also not on the massive earth itself, so we're raised up on a patio area. Um, we've also got the earthing systems all connected back to the same potential. And the light's going to be changed, because if you actually look on section 702, although for me, it doesn't actually apply because of the product standard. Again, I want to reiterate that. But that's going to be changed. It's going to be um, a class two light fitting low voltage. It's actually going to be an LED profile strip light going across there. So that's changing. And the socket outlet is actually outside of the zones, even in section 702. We got the tape measure out and checked it. But when the hot tub's installed, which is going to be in a couple of weeks time, we're going to go back. We're going to have a look at it. We're going to reference the manufacturer's instructions because there is another exciting side to all of this that I haven't mentioned yet, which might make the earthing system entirely irrelevant anyway. But we'll jump back to that later on. One other thing I did want to mention actually was the GWIZ isolator. So that's a, a new product on us that we've not used before. Um, just noticed them up on the screw, uh, screw fix on the CEF website, and I thought we'd give them a try. Really good, actually. Lots of wiring space in there, loads of entry points. Depending on how you um, bring your connections into it and screw it to the wall, it can be IP66, 67, 69. So it's very much um, of the right waterproofing to be used external and in and around the hot tub. Now, again, ideally you need those two meters away from the hot tub, but that's not always practical as we saw in our install. Uh, so that was a nice feature to use. I also want to mention um, Dan from DSS and his channel. I've been watching avidly while he's doing his uh, build at home. So he's got his extension that he's putting up. He's had Charlie working on there, John working with him. Absolutely love it. If you haven't watched that series yet, go and watch it because it is fantastic. Um, you know, Dan makes some awesome content and his latest video resonated with me about making content that you enjoy and you believe in. And that's the emphasis behind this video. So I could easily have banged an earth and electrode in and just shown a nice glossy picture of a hot tub install and made no mention of anything else that was going on and banged a video out onto YouTube. But this is what I like doing, doing um, having de debate and discussion and talking about some of the things we face as installers. So I'm active out on the tools as often as possible, putting myself in these scenarios, 
to try and figure stuff out and then offer my opinion on it back to share with everybody who might or might not watch my channel and I have a discussion around it. It's as simple as that really. I really, really enjoy that. I've said before, I love it when people get involved in the comments. The last video we had jump out was brilliant because of, because of that. And uh, yeah, we're going to crack on with a few more videos now. Um, we'll jump back to the office for you to have a little look through some of the books with me where I can explain a little bit more about my thinking. Let me know in the comments exactly what you think. Get involved and uh, yeah, we'll carry on with the video. I've just remembered actually there was something else I wanted to discuss and it's to do with the kind of maximum load that's at this property. So it is a big old house. As we've said, there is um, a shed and a, a workshop external to the main building when we were talking about the sub mains and the air thing uh, systems down at those. There is also the electric vehicle charge point. So it was to kind of say adding, adding the hot tub into the mix, you know, you've got another large consumption of electricity on that 100 amp service head. So it was to really explain that there is actually um, quite a small load in the other places. So whilst the, there is a big supply cable to that external building that's down the other end of the driveway, you know, that's more to factor in things such as vault drop than an actual large consumption of electricity. Uh, it is just for lighting and to you know plug in a pressure washer or something on occasion. It's not um, any sort of heavy loads down there. Same with the shed, it's just lighting really. Um, nothing of any real consumption at all going on with that. And the pod point has the CT clamp on and it will ramp itself down if the um, consum consumption is rising. So we're kind of we're kind of covered off there. Um, it is still a factor, absolutely, and you can apply that doomsday scenario to, to most properties that have hot tubs in and electric vehicle charging, uh, but that's the reality of the world we live in. Um, the actual homeowner did tell me about his uh, colleague at work who's got an even bigger hot tub, so it's one of these swimming hot tubs where it's basically a swimming pool, um, and if that would be one of the ones that you know you might want to say that it actually is a swimming pool because um, you know it's the size of one. But yeah, um, they had that connected and it actually tripped the power at the transformer in the village that they live in. And they were told if they wanted to have it uh, in use at the same time as they're charging their electric vehicle, they would have to spend £80,000 upgrading the transformer um, for the whole village itself. So yeah, that, that was an interesting little story. And apparently the solution was that they just don't charge the vehicle up at the same time as they use the hot tub. Um, so I'm assuming his electric vehicle charge point doesn't have load limiting technology built into it. You know, I don't know. I haven't seen it just here in a story second hand. But I thought I'd mention that and discuss about the, the um, loading on this particular install because, you know, it is a factor. Definitely when you're adding another source of electrical consumption, you do have to kind of plan that in and make sure that you're not putting the service fuse at an increased risk. Um, but there's no electric heating in that property. There is no electric shower. Um, it's gas cookers. They do have an electric oven, but it's just a low, um, low consumption. So, you know, there's not, not really a lot going on there. It's just a family of four people living in a massive house. Uh, it's a lovely place, actually. But yeah, let's jump to the office. And I want to cover some of the, the key points that, that I believe are the way we should be approaching this. And again, this is just my engineering judgment, if you like, and the way we go about doing it. I don't mind holding my hand up and saying, yeah, you know, how we approach in the installation of hot tubs. And there's, um, there's a few ways of tackling it, but there are some key aspects we need to remember. And one is that product standards apply to hot tubs. So that's something we need to always keep in mind. There is a product standard for them. And um, if we're just going to dismiss that as, as an irrelevance, then that's not really looking at things objectively. You know, they're there and we do need to acknowledge, accept them and take them into consideration when we're carrying out our installations. Uh, and also the manufacturer's instructions based on those product standards as well. So we need to reference those. We know that within the electrical industry that the manufacturer's instructions carry a lot more weight than anything else. So again, we must reference those. Now, one of the key books that we can we can use, because there's no direct mention of hot tubs within the wiring regs themselves, but they are mentioned in one of the guidance notes, and that's guidance note seven for special locations. And I'll spin you around and we'll have a look at it in a minute. Um, but I just kind of wanted to put forward um, a discussion around earthing in particular, because it's often said if you install an earth electrode, then you're going to mitigate the risk of step voltages, which is a difference in potential as you're getting into and out of the hot tub. 
because of the, I mean, if you were utilising the supplies earth, for example, that there could be a difference and users of the equipment could notice that and it could present as an annoyance or a worry to the user that they, you know, they're getting an electric shock, even though it's not at a dangerous level. Now, when we're talking about the supply network, and we've discussed this before on social media, that generally the volt drop within a supply network is limited to around 18 and a half volts ish. And that's to do with the reliability of the um, voltage requirements that the DNOs have to maintain in the network to you. So you shouldn't really see any more than that, but it is an impossible to see higher levels than that when the network isn't in good health or there's imbalancing and, and things like that. You know, you can get higher voltages than that. And we do need to be mindful of that as, of in, as installers. Um, and one of the approaches people can take is to install an earth electrode. And that's something else that we must remember we're doing. We're not TT and installations here. That's talking about the earthing arrangement at the supply. So we're installing earth electrodes for a particular piece of equipment. That's actually what's being carried out. Um, now, if you look in the, the guidance note, they talk about using earth electrodes with a value of under 20 ohms. And then you can use them in conjunction with the earthing system to the, to the property itself. And really that's to try and um, encompass fault conditions and that earth electrode being used to carry a lot of current um, and you do need to factor in the sizing of your your connection back to the main earthing terminal if you're going to do that and have the electrode somewhere near a hot tub for example so there are considerations to factor in um, but when you when you're speaking about using an earth electrode and in particular potential difference we need to actually look at the overlapping way that that the earthing works within the mass of earth and there's been a few studies looking at this and just driving one rod in um, truly and honestly isn't going to cover all aspects of those possibilities of different potentials within that mass of earth around the entire hot tub it just isn't and that's why with with swimming pools and looking at section 702 if we're going to apply that to hot tubs then really you need a nest of earth rods or a grid that encompasses a larger area in and around it so that you are going to get those overlaps and that any rise in potential in one part around the hot tub is going to be replicated in others so the issue of step voltage can be mitigated now that's quite a lot of work um, to put in to a hot tub installation but if that is necessary and that is what we are saying then we have to be doing it you know there's no excuse not to and there's so many other factors to 702 that would need to be applied as well I think it's just one of those things where you can you can sit and say this and you know act like you are the, the fountain of all knowledge and I'm not trying to do this here um, but the practicalities of what actually goes on um, out on site and what actually results in a safe installation um, you know are very very different and you know our our approach to it is if you want to use an earth electrode then use one. There's nothing in the regulations that prohibit you from doing that. I have no issue with anybody who wants to put an earth electrode on a hot tub. We have done it on our installations before. Um, no problem whatsoever. If you want to use the distributor's earthing facility and you think that that's a, a reliable way of connecting the electrical equipment, it meets the manufacturer's instructions and the product standard, there is absolutely no reason why you cannot do that. And um, you know, I think we, we get into these arguments and debates about stuff just for the sake of it sometimes when really all the regulations are, are looking towards with hot tubs when we look at it is RCD protection. That's the one thing they keep coming back to. And if we really want to improve um, the quality of our installations with hot tubs, for me, we could do that by utilising um, some RCDs connected in series and you could have an upfront 30 milliamp RCD for example and then at the hot tub itself drop that down to 10 milliamps so that's kind of giving you a bit of robustness in the um, earth leakage protection with, with the hot tub so you've got a couple of devices there because as we know you know it's not unreasonable to expect that an RCD could fail so if you've got that there you know it's a bit of extra protection for the users uh, and again, if you want to go to the trouble of installing um, an earth mat with under, underneath the hot tub, it's certainly not going to hurt. Let's have a little jump into Guidance Note 7 anyway. Go around now and point you at the desk. And I just need to jump to 13.8, which is page 131. And this is where it kind of references in the hot tubs. It tells you here about um, some of the extra risks uh, that people might be 
facing whilst using a hot tub. And a lot of those are common sense, they make, they make sense. And it goes on to say here that there are no specific requirements in the wiring regs um, with hot tubs. However, supplies to hot tubs should be protected by a 30 milliamp RCD. So that's a statement that they should be protected by an RCD. It then goes on to talk about um, hot tubs being used in rooms and outside, and we'll look specifically at the outdoors one because that's kind of what we've dealt with on this install. And section 702, and it says here where a hot tub is located outdoors in the open air it is recommended, so it's a recommendation, that the requirements of section 702 should be applied in full. And the requirements are given in chapter 2 to this guide. And it does actually mention about the product standard. So it says here, persons involved in the design of the electrical installation for a hot tub should consult the product standard BSEN 60335-2-60, specification for safety of household and similar appliances, and particular requirements for whirlpool baths and whirlpool spas. So it actually tells you that there, which is interesting. And if we zoom off now to um, section 2 of here, so this is speaking about 702 uh, within the special locations, and I've highlighted this little section here because the scope of this um, section, and this is where we get these kind of spinning ourselves around in circles a little bit, but the particular requirements of section 702 apply to the basins of swimming pools, the basins of fountains, and the basins of paddling pools even. Um, so you're getting the kids paddling pool out in the garden, is it a consideration where you need to be looking at this? Uh, in the areas in normal use, the risk of electric shock is increased by a reduction in body resistance and the contact of the body with earth potential. Swimming pools within the scope of an equipment standard are outside the scope of the regulations. So hot tubs, as we know, are within an equipment standard. So that statement there says that they're actually outside the scope of the regulations. So you've kind of been sent to this section and then sent away from it. But we will proceed. Um, you know, it goes on to, to talk about the risks um, and the zones. So you've got zone one, which is two metres around the edge of the pool and then an extra metre and a half for zone two. Um, it, it talks you through some of the supplementary protective air potential bonding that's required between uh, all the conductive parts, uh, your protection for safety. Uh, but one of the things I did want to want to look at I mean it does actually talk you through luminaires and things as well but generally with a hot tub you've just got your hot tub installation there could be some outside lights in and around it and other bits and pieces that you need to factor in as well um, for if they need to be uh, bonded or not are you going to connect them into the earthing system of the hot tub or the house factors to, to consider but here speaking about socket outlets and this is one I wanted to reference because of a lot of the inflatable hot tubs and it says here sockets must not be installed in zone zero or one so that's within two meters of the edge of the pool. And a lot of the supply cords on those particular products aren't very long. So you would have to have the socket within that position. And it does say it's allowable, but you need to do these things. And, and basically it's putting an RCD on there that comply with regulation form 5.1.1. Um, it then goes on to talk about if you are installing the equipment in zone two, and again, you need an RCD. So I'm spinning through this as quick as I can because this is going to end up quite a long video, but I wanted to cover as much as I could. And if you're looking at the, the fixed equipment that's designed for use in swimming pools and other basins, so this is your filters and whatnot, and typically with a hot tub you find them underneath, um, you know, so they're within zone one. And the equipment must be located inside an insulated enclosure providing at least class two or equivalent insulation. And this is why it's saying the product standard um, should be followed because the product standard for a hot tub could say something entirely different to this but this is the actual um, guidance to section 702 if you are using a swimming pool or hot tub with a filtration system within zone one it must do this so that's not saying you, you it's recommended it must be done the equipment must be accessible via a hatch um, provide protection to class 2 or equivalent insulation and it goes on to list uh, some of the other reasoning of why and again it mentions RCDs so I kind of wanted to to just drop that in there that you know you're getting those statements of must and um, it's referencing things you have to do and that's why hot tubs have product standards because it could be very much different from this so you need to reference into that essentially and make sure that you're installing in a way that the manufacturer intends 
and that's what we've done in this video I can show you the manufacturer's instructions earlier on and um, reference into that and the reason we went for the installation that we did again I'll talk about that out on site rather than the here and now but I just wanted to have a brief chat um, around the air thing of a hot tub um, and my opinion on it there is a lot of people who put their opinions out there there are other things we can do to protect ourselves in different ways people have suggested about using the um, EV protection for pen fault for example so you could put a, a matty or something like that on and, and again when you're talking about the the step voltages for example you know that's not necessarily going to give you the the solution to that problem because you know the mass of earth outside is essentially a great big conductor under fault conditions so you can have neighboring properties as we discussed earlier where you can get voltages presenting in and around the, the tub itself so we need to get out of this mindset of just concerning ourselves with um, the equipment that we're connecting and its use you know the application of 702 is, is beyond that that's why it's creating this um, this zone of safety if you like so we can't just simply say bang an earth rod in and that's going to meet the requirements of 702 because in my opinion it isn't there are other factors at play um, but yeah hope you found that video entertaining and useful it may cut back out on site now depending how i edit this together or not this could be the end get involved in the comments as always i love a bit of a discussion and debate i don't have all the answers is all i'm sharing is my own experience and opinion and some of the stuff we do um, i'm sure we'll get things wrong we'll get things right i'm not here to be a clever know-it-all smart ass i'm just here to join in the discussion and get us all thinking a little bit um throwing our ideas around without any kind of one-upmanship and stupidness like that uh, or dictating how things should be done i think it's um it's more positive that we all kind of try and talk these things out as best we can and figure out exactly what um, is a better way of installing electrical systems thank you all for watching Thank you.